1% since July, the ALP at 46%, a drop of one point. And on those figures, says the poll, the government would have been returned with an almost unchanged majority. The other survey by Australian nationwide opinion polls sees things somewhat differently. It too has the government gaining and Labor dropping slightly, but its figures give the ALP 52% of the vote and the Coalition only 40%. On that basis, says the ANOP poll, the government would lose between 15 and 20 seats in New South Wales and Victoria. Both polls were conducted on a nationwide basis. The Gallup poll canvassed views in all 124 federal electorates, the ANOP in 82 seats covering all states. To the PM, Mr McMahon, of course, has a personal as well as a prime ministerial stake in the latest poll results. The Australian nationwide opinion poll sample in New South Wales suggests the swing to Labor since the 1969 elections is now almost 9%. And on that basis, the poll says Labor would win at least seven seats now held by the Liberals in the Sydney metropolitan area, including the seat of Lowe, which is represented by Mr McMahon. And that, of course, makes the contest for Lowe a specially significant one. Tony Joyce reports. Not too many camera hopefuls will be doing their campaigning in this sort of style. But this is Lowe, the suburban Sydney seat now held by the Prime Minister. This week, Mr McMahon got his own personal re-election campaign on the move at a number of public and private meetings in the electorate and this Meet the People swing through three local factories. Never worry about it too much. In another part of the electorate, it's a much older car with a very different message. Running against a sitting Prime Minister is a tough assignment and ALP candidate Bill Fisher admits that one of his main problems is what he calls visibility. Mr Fisher, a QC specialising in industrial relations, hopes to make his face in low as well known as the Prime Minister's with an energetic, almost flamboyant campaign. Low is a large, sprawling electorate six miles west of Sydney. Its main suburbs, Ryde, Concord, Strathfield and Burwood. There are a few significant local issues in urban seats such as Lowe. Here both Liberal and Labor will be campaigning basically on the whole of the federal government's record. But as Prime Minister, how much local campaigning has Mr McMahon been able to do? Yesterday I went to a function at the Roman Catholic Church in Concord. Later I went to, uh, to the Jewish uh, War Memorial um, and I was able to uh, give some help in opening up the new kindergarten there. And last night I went and heard David Frost. That was a pretty full day for me. And today, as you can see, it's valuable and it's pleasant too. This is important. You find this pleasant, do you, Moody? I did. And I think you could see that so many people knew you, so many people wanted to shake hands with you, so many people were pleasant to you. So I did find it a very pleasant morning. You I say it. so many people were pleasant. Are you surprised at this? No, I'm not surprised at it. We all like to see it. Even though we think we know it, we'd like to see a bit of the evidence before we, you know, sort of uh, make a final, come to a final conclusion. But in any event, it was a happy event. At the last poll, there were five candidates, including an independent, Bernard McMahon. After the transfer of the bottom of the poll DLP candidates' preferences, Mr William McMahon was left with 4,793 votes more than his Labour opponent. That was 1969. This time it seems everyone's getting into the act. With nine declared candidates and a possibility of others to nominate, the low electors could face an all-time record choice. How does Mr Fisher react to the theory that a large number of candidates always helps the sitting member? Well, I don't believe it. This large number of candidates, and there could be as many as ten, practically all represent areas of liberal dissent. They're not standing to impede the Labor Party, they're standing because they're dissatisfied with the Liberal Party, even personally dissatisfied with the Prime Minister. Uh, it would be a negation of all they do if they don't give many of their second preferences to my candidature rather than his. Mr McMahon has been the member for Lowe since the seat was created in 1949. In those days, suburbs like Strathfield, Croydon North and Burwood were the clear preserve of the business and professional classes. 
the vast and imposing houses they built ample evidence of their wealth and confidence. Today, many of the once exclusive streets look like a developer's guided tour of the Australian home unit. In 1969, the DLP candidate, Mrs Agnes Bannon, polled 1,490 votes. Mr McMahon received over 1,000 of her preferences, the Labor Party less than 10%. Mrs. Bannon, a music teacher who founded the Strathfield Symphony Orchestra, will be standing again this year. Her preferences this time could be decisive. Is it fair to assume that they'll again be going to Mr. McMahon? They could easily do so. Uh, as yet, we have not been told uh, where the preferences will go, but they could easily go to the government. You say they could easily go. Surely there's no real possibility of them going anywhere else to any other candidate here. Well, I think not. After the last ba budget, I think the DLP, um, the policy of the DLP, the Liberal Party has taken quite a lot of their policy. And I think that at the moment, the DLP is quite happy about the government. If money is all that counts, the smaller candidates might as well drop out and leave it to the big two. According to the Liberals' Metropolitan Supervisor, Mr Bill Wakeling, the party's organisation in Lowe is and the I best in the in Commonwealth. The system of education with the right of the parents to be able to choose. Here, so opening new I classrooms at a Catholic school in the electorate, Mr McMahon may pick up some state aid votes. But this sort of campaigning isn't likely to impress the defence of government school sympathisers. And in 1969, dogs polled nearly double the DLP vote. We've learned the hard lesson that in Australian politics, the politicians are only interested in one thing, and that's getting into Parliament. They're not interested in anything else, children's education, religious freedom, or anything else. So we've reached the conclusion that the only way to affect them and to make them take notice of us is for us to either put somebody in or put somebody out. And in the case of the electorate of Lowe, we want to put Mr McMahon right out because he's one of the worst state aiders that there is. Perhaps the most novel of all the candidates will be the one put up by Camp Inc. The fact that their first and only candidate happens to live in the Prime Minister's electorate is described as a convenient accident by university lecturer and campaign director Lex Watson. Mr Watson, what does Camp Inc hope to achieve by putting up a candidate at this election? Well, naturally, we hope to achieve publicity for the, for the issue of homosexual law reform and for the wider issue of the position of homosexuals in Australian society and other minority groups. It's not simply a homosexual law reform campaign. Uh, so that's, that's the main operation. Ultimately, of course, we hope to achieve the winning of a homosexual, a confessed homosexual, to a seat in the federal parliament. The electors of Lowe are said to be statistically older than the average. Many of them are retired. Do you really think they're going to be sympathetic to uh, the aims of gay liberation and camping? Uh, surveys of the homosexual vote done in Melbourne have shown that over 50% of homosexuals are prepared to change their vote solely on the issue of whether a politician will or will not support homosexual law reform. Given that the homosexual component of the population is over 10%, probably 15%, uh, that means that there is a decisive percentage of the electorate that can be moved on this particular issue. And that vote is to be won or lost. And that, we think, is the important issue. Mr McMahon has already said that Sydney's electorates will be the Liberal Party's danger zone. His own seat of Lowe is currently rated as number eight on the Liberals' nightmare list. And Lowe isn't the blue ribbon garden suburb it was in 1949. In the last 23 years, nearly 20,000 new electors have joined the rolls. It's now a mixed suburb, with a scattering of light industry. Russians, Turks, Greeks and Lebanese now rent flats where spacious gardens and tennis courts once stood. But can the Labour Party rally enough Liberal votes to unseat the Prime Minister? A former Liberal state member for the area, Mr Ben Doig, believes they can and is now openly supporting Labour. How does he see Mr McMahon's performance as Prime Minister? McMahon is a highly intelligent, very hard-working man. I know his, his uh, virtues as well as his faults. He is intensely ambitious. Nothing will stand in the way of his ambition. Not even the welfare of Australia. Has he been a good local member no. for this area? No, he hasn't. 
No, he hasn't. Uh, he has never lived in the electorate, even though he promised. Uh, I have this on the authority of the late uh, Colonel Milne, who was a man of honour. He promised the selection committee he would live in the electorate. He didn't. Have former Liberal supporters come up to you here in the electorate and said, I'm not going to vote Liberal yes, this time? Yes, they have. Uh, without mentioning names, let me quote you a typical case of a retired school inspector who was a fanatic Liberal supporter, uh, whose small superannuation is insufficient for him to live on. He, he got a job as a clerk and he lost that when, uh, when unemployment came on. He told me he was going to vote, vote Labour for the first time in his life. Now, let me put this case to you, and this is the case I put to the, to the dear old ladies of Strathfield who've always supported Bill McMahon. I've said to one of them, the best thing you can do to Bill McMahon, the kindest thing you can do to him, is to vote against him on this occasion, because the, the Labour Party will win. If, if McMahon is re-elected for low, he'll be in opposition. He won't be the leader of the opposition. The Liberals will tear him to pieces because they will regard him as the architect of their defeat. It's a fact that Australian electors quite like the idea of having a Prime Minister as their local sitting member, a factor that could be crucial in preserving low for the Liberals. But according to the poll and the questions asked, Mr McMahon's popularity has been down to 16%, his approval rating something less than 30%, and only last month, he was again under pressure from the Get Gorton back men. At the last election, Mr McMahon was the Federal Treasurer. What bearing does he think his subsequent elevation to the Prime Ministership will have on the poll? I think it must have a good, good effect on it. I can't go any further than that, but you only had to look at this morning as an illustration of a good, uh, a good welcome. It's something that you couldn't uh, hope to better. And this must be an illustration of people's thinking. You put no faith in in the polls, which have in the I past... I put some, yes I do. They have in the past shown your own popularity as running slightly below that of your party. Yeah, yes, I agree with that, but don't forget, I'm the one that's taking all the risks and making most of the decisions and getting the bulk of the criticism, so it's what you'd expect. But that happens in other countries too. Well, it varies, I think, on what they think of the Prime Minister, but I think your broad proposition that uh, if you are Prime Minister, the prestige of your office would naturally contribute towards your vote, I think is right. But I think that there may be a countervailing circumstance. Last election, Mr McMahon was being put upon by Mr Gorton, had been blackballed by Mr McEwen, uh, was rumoured to, to, to lose the Treasury, which he did lose, and in a sense he went as a popular underdog sort of candidate. Uh, this time, judging by all the polls, he will not go as a popular candidate and that may counteract the, the sort of thing you're talking about. In 1961, your um, majority was something like 680. Um, Lowe isn't a safe Liberal seat. Do you have any fears at all that you might lose it? I think 1961 was an aberration that I never want to see repeated again. But don't forget, not long before that, it, in low alone, it was 10,000. It's a different seat altogether now. And I think you'll find it'll be a pretty good result when we have the elections, and certainly much, ever so much better than 1961, and certainly much, ever so much better than the last time we had an election. Are you worried more about retaining your seat here or winning the election, or do they come together? I'm not worried. I have tried to say that a few minutes ago. I believe we'll win, and we'll win well. I believe now that the Labour Party is making the errors that it's making, as for example on revaluation, I think we pick up more seats than many people think. Mr McMahon to the average Labour voter is just another Liberal Prime Minister who they don't like much. But Mr McMahon to the average Liberal voter is a, a Prime Minister who at least they have a big question mark besides. And uh, I think that that's where he is in real trouble. He's in real trouble with his traditional vote. According to both the major opinion polls, the swing to Labour in New South Wales has been more than 8% since the 1969 election. Bill Fisher needs only 6.5% to win low. It remains to be seen, firstly, whether the opinion polls will be confirmed by the ballot box, and secondly, how far Mr McMahon's personal vote can counter any possible swing to Labour. Only one Prime Minister, Bruce, has ever lost his own seat, and that was 43 years ago.
If the sensation is repeated this year in Lowe, Mr McMahon will at least have some consolation in the certain knowledge that 20 or so of his coalition colleagues will also have lost their seats in a massive Labour landslide. Tony Joyce reporting on the Prime Minister and his personal opposition in the seat of Lowe. I noticed the Prime Minister said he only set some store by the opinion polls. Perhaps he was thinking of that sage old piece of wisdom that goes, too many people go to statistics like a drunk to a lamppost, more for support than for light, unquote. 